Hello, I'm Marlene O'Hare, and welcome to our very first LGS Forum video, The Ketogenic Diet as a Treatment Option for Lennox-Gastaut Syndrome. For those considering the ketogenic diet, there are often many, many questions. So we are very fortunate to be able to bring you an expert in the field, Dr. Eric Kossoff of Johns Hopkins Hospital. Dr. Kossoff is an associate professor of neurology and pediatrics and medical director of the Ketogenic Diet Center at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. He is also the author of Ketogenic Diets. And at the end of this segment, we'll tell you how to request a free copy. I also had the great pleasure of meeting with one of Dr. Kossoff's patients, Nadia, a beautiful seven-year-old diagnosed with Lennox Gastaut, and her parents, David and Jill. There's been a lot of excitement around the ketogenic diet, and as you'll see, for good reason. I asked David and Jill to take us through Nadia's experience with Lennox Gastaut and how they came to the decision to try the ketogenic diet. Nadia was about 14 months before we realized that what was happening were seizures. And so the first thing that we did once she was diagnosed with infantile spasms, we tried vitamin B. And when that didn't work, we went to the first medication. And then by 18 months, uh, Nadia had reached status epilepticus. And so we added yet a second drug. And up until her two-year point, Nadia would have seizures break through every probably every five to six weeks. At about two years and three months, we started the ketogenic diet and we never saw another tonic clonic seizure again. By five and a half, she was diagnosed with Lennox Gastel. When we treat children and adults with epilepsy, we have four options for them, medications, dietary treatments, of which one of them is the ketogenic diet, nerve stimulation, like the vagus nerve stimulator, and then surgery. Generally, we pick medications first, but sometimes we may lean towards the diet sooner, sooner rather than later. It is uh, almost always, depending on the different variants, still high fat, low carbohydrate, with carefully controlled portion and period size. What percentage of your patients have you seen at the Ketogenic Diet Center here at Johns Hopkins respond to the diet? In general, about 50% Marlene will respond, which is quite good. Of those 50%, even more can do better. Probably a quarter of children will have a 90% reduction in their seizures. Probably about 1 in 10 will become seizure-free. We have some new data that's coming out from our center where we've looked at children with Lennox Gastaut and found, similar to what we see overall, that about a 50% response rate for Lennox Gastaut to the diet seems to be the norm. How do you know when is the time to stop the diet? Or is there a time that you would stop the diet? That has changed also over the years. You know, the traditional time to stop the diet, if it's working, is about two years. If it's not working, usually three to six months. The side effects you can usually prevent or treat, and you don't have to stop the diet. So the short term, occasionally we'll see some vomiting, some fatigue, uh, something called acidosis, as children sort of go into the ketogenic diet metabolism. Um, sometimes the seizures can get a little worse temporarily. We do see, um, sometimes we see a little weight loss. Children maybe... Weight loss? Yeah, if they refuse the foods, they don't oh, like I the see. foods. Sometimes we'll see a little constipation in the immediate time period, and that's usually very treatable. Um, sometimes, like in the first few months, we'll see the cholesterol levels go up. It seems like they come back down to normal after a while. Parents never cease to amaze me, Marlene. They're pretty unbelievable, especially when they're dealing with a child with severe seizures. Uh, in addition, teenagers are kind of a group that actually can be very compliant, can do very well. If the child is doing well, they understand what's going on. They know why it's important that they eat these certain kind of foods. A lot of these adolescents we put on the modified Atkins diet just to make it a little bit easier. And then probably one of the fastest growing groups is now adults. This was usually a diet for many years that was only used in children. But if you go back to the 1930s, when there really weren't any f drugs available on the market except for a few, uh, adults were going on the ketogenic diet. Now a lot of them are going on the modified Atkins diet. We have now a center specifically just for adults. It's a subdivision of our ketogenic diet center. For adults. It's an adult epilepsy diet center. We know lots of children with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome become adults with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. And if the diet was helping before, there's no reason they have to stop the diet just because they become an adult. Can you give me just a typical diet? The, the average child is on, again, mostly fat foods. Things they may eat for breakfast would be things like eggs, bacon, sausage. Um, heavy whipping cream with, with a little bit of water can look like milk. 
you maybe a little bit of vegetables and some fruit as sort of a typical breakfast on the ketogenic diet. There's you know different recipes in different countries, different sort of resources available, incredible recipes that are very culture specific. Uh, whether you're vegetarian, whether you're kosher, whether you're um, on certain other restrictions, food allergies, whatever, yeah. certain food allergies, we'd say no. Now we say sure, we can do that. <laughs>